Today we're going to be making apple and cinnamon rolls with puff pastry. Okay, let's get started. What we're going to need is some shop brought puff pastry. I'm using the Just Roll. Uh, it's a very good pastry. There are other brands around. Supermarkets do their own brands. Uh, you're going to need about two heaped teaspoons of um, ordinary granulated sugar. You're going to need about six heaped teaspoons of icing sugar and a little water. You're going to need one egg yolk, just the yolk on its own, beaten into a bowl with some kind of pastry brush. You're going to need some ground cinnamon and some apple sauce. I'm using a Bramley apple sauce, the type that you would normally use with, say, pork or something like that. Okay, let's roll out the pastry. You want to get your pastry out of the fridge but an hour before you want to use it or you'll find that it's it's too stiff to work with and when you unroll it it cracks okay what we're going to do is add about a spoonful of apple over the pastry just spread it out so the small pieces dotted around the pastry, but avoid the top two inches of the pastry. You can add a little more if you need it. We don't want to overload it because it will make it difficult to roll uh, and it will just ooze out as it cooks. So if we get the applesauce spread around all over the pastry, With occasional lumps dotted around just like that. Then we can use some ground cinnamon. What we want to do is just sprinkle this over the pastry. Be fairly generous with this. Doesn't matter if you've missed little sections. Just give the section that you've covered in the apples a generous dusting, like so. Then what we're going to do, this top section, top couple of inches that we've not added any ingredients to, we're going to just put a little bit of the egg yolk on here, just a little bit to help the pastry stick together once we've rolled it up. This is going to be the absolute end of the outside layer. So we're using this egg yolk just to glue the pastry together. Otherwise they have a habit of unrolling in the oven. So okay, get started and just fold the end over. About an inch or so to get started. Then we want to roll that up into a reasonably tight coil. There we have it, that's nicely rolled up. Now when it comes to the baking, I'm going to be using one of these silicon baking sheets that you can get because they really are non-stick. Although I've had to put a slight smear of butter over mine because it's a few years old and it's getting a bit tired. But you can use any non-stick kind of baking tray. Now what we want to do, cut this in half, in half again. and then cut those sections in half. Approximately. So we're gonna end up with eight pieces. What we want to do is transfer these straight onto the baking sheet. Put them in a good way from the edge because we're going to flatten them down. So you can just use the back of your hand
to press those open into a round circle about the size of a coffee mug. We're going to repeat that with all of them. And there we go. So they're all nicely flattened out. They don't have to be too uniform. Um, now we want to cover them in a little bit of the egg yolk. This will help them get a nice colour on them when they when they cook. Don't have to be too generous. Just cover them all up so the surface is just wet. Then what we want to do is just add some of our ordinary granulated sugar. So we're just going to take a little pinch onto the top of each one so that, that bakes into the surface. Okay, they're now ready to go into the oven. We want to go into a preheated oven at about 180 degrees and they're gonna need between 20 and 30 minutes. Um, set timer for about 20 minutes, take a little look at them, leave them in for a bit more if you think they need it. By then they should have puffed up nicely and the top should have gone golden brown. Now when you're working with these silicon baking sheets, obviously they're very flexible, I find the easiest way to get them in the oven is to take out your oven shelf before you pre-warm your oven and just slide it on. And it works the same way when you want to take it out. Obviously you just use a tea towel and out it comes and then you can slide it off onto the work surface. Okay, I'm going to pop these in the oven and then we'll take a look at them once they're cooked. Okay, while they're in the oven cooking, we can make our icing. So about six heaped teaspoonfuls of icing sugar and a little splash of water. What we want to do is add this very gradually and stir it in. You just add a little at a time until it starts to resemble a thick icing. Add a tiny amount each time. If you find that you've made it too thin, you can always add a little bit more icing sugar. So there we go, a few drops of water, and we've got a nice gloopy icing to add to the top. So we can just set that to one side, ready for when they come out of the oven. Okay, there we are, they've been in the oven now for about 25 minutes and as you can see they've puffed up nicely and they've got a lovely brown colour. So let's get them transferred onto something so they can cool down. I'm just using the, uh, the grill out of my grill pan, just any kind of rack will do. If you put them straight onto a plate, the bottoms are going to get a bit sweaty and they can go soggy. So we'll just transfer those over. reason I've set them over a baking tray is I can ice them and any surplus icing will just fall through into the tray it's not going to make a big gloopy mess everywhere okay so if we take the icing that we mixed up earlier just give it a bit of a stir around and you can ice these however you like really you can just drizzle a tiny bit on you can completely cover them you can add a little bit of food coloring make the icing a different color uh, you can put some sugar sprinkles on top whatever you fancy really so I just start off with covering the first one and then maybe we can do some crisscrosses on the next one. And so forth, whatever takes your fancy. So I'll just do the rest of these. There we go, that's those iced. Now I'd give them about 10 minutes to cool down before you eat them because the apple parts can be very, very hot. So I'm just gonna leave those to cool for five, 10 minutes, then we'll cut one in half and take a look. 
Right, they've been cooling now for about 10 minutes. The icing has set nicely and they've cooled down a bit. So let's cut one in half and take a look. So we've got a nice flaky pastry, bits of apple through the swirls that we've made in there. Really light pastry, really simple to make and really cheap to make as well. If you've enjoyed this video, perhaps you'd like to give it a thumbs up maybe consider subscribing to the channel. Hit that notification bell so you'll get alerts when I release future videos. Thanks for watching.